students how do the air and water transform the surface of the earth let us see how over millions of years these rocks have been shaped into plains valleys with loose soils river valleys that cut mountains plateaus and so on well how do you think all this happened the hard primary rocks get broken into smaller pieces which are cut off from the parent rock and carried to other places these smaller rocks get deposited there let us look in detail about this process which is called weathering the gradual disintegration of rocks through actions of atmosphere or weather is called weathering as you all know the rocks expand when exposed to heat and contract when they are cooled this expansion and contraction is a regular process which happens during the day and night throughout summers and winters as the rocks expand and contract the rocks tend to become brittle and hence begin to crack The water and the moisture in the air facilitate this process further. The water undergoes a reaction with the chemicals in the rocks and weakens the rocks. The process by which the rocks are weakened and broken down is called weathering. The next stage in the process is erosion. Students All of you must have heard about erosion. Soil erosion for example, isn't it? The flowing water or wind have a lot of energy which erodes or cuts away the rocks or soil covers in places at higher altitudes. The active wearing away of the earth's surface by various agents like wind and water is called erosion. The active wearing away of the earth's surface by various agents like wind and water is called erosion. As we all know, water assumes many forms like rain, river, flowing groundwater, sea waves, glaciers, etc. The eroded materials like small rocks, gravel, fine soil, mud etc are carried by winds and water. The process of carrying off the eroded materials is called transportation. The rivers and winds cut soils and rocks in place and transport them to different and distant places. The next stage students is deposition. As the rivers and winds slow down, there exists no force to carry the materials further. As a result, they get dumped at certain places. The dumped debris facilitates for the formation of plains and river basins. Many a times, most of the materials are transported by the rivers to the seas. The materials get deposited layer after and get accumulated at the bottom of the sea. Over the period of time, these layers transform as sedimentary rocks. The swift flow of the river transforms into water with high pressure as it falls down across the slopes. Students, these four stages, the weathering, erosion, transportation and deposition are a continuous process that take place simultaneously in various parts of the world at varied rates. the nature of the slope the structure of the rocks the local climate interference of human beings etc are some of the factors that influence the rate at which these stages take place <music> students in all this process the water plays a very important role the work of water therefore begins right from the start that is its originating point in the mountains the swift flow of the river transforms into water with high pressure as it falls down across the slopes this helps in cutting the mountains vertically 
which results in formation of deep valleys that are narrow at the bottom and wide at the top. Such valleys are called V-shaped valleys. The water in this stage has so much force that it can move very heavy and hard rocks. But students, what do you think happens when the rocks are very hard? The rivers cut narrow valley when the rocks are very hard. With the sides being very steep, gorges are formed. The gorges have an almost equal width both at the top and the bottom. The Bison Gorge on the river Godavari in Andhra Pradesh and the Indus Gorge in Kashmir are some of the examples of the gorges. The next form of erosion is the canyon. The canyons have steep side slopes and may be as deep as gorges. The canyons, unlike the gorges, are wider at the top than at the bottom. The Grand Canyon on the river Colorado in USA is the biggest canyon in the world. With a length of 466 kilometers, the canyon is 1.6 kilometers deep and has a width of 188 meter to 29 kilometers. One can see a number of waterfalls in the mountain areas with prevalent and sharp changes of slope. The force of the waterfalls dig out the bottom of the rock to form the plunge pools. Once the river enters the plain, the course changes. The flow of the river slows down. This implies that it cannot carry the heavy particles and hence deposits them on the banks. When the river is in flood, the force of it increases and it cuts the soil. When the force decreases, it deposits silt. During each flood, the rivers deposit a layer of sediment which results in the formation of a fertile flood plain gradually. The Ganga plains, the Krishna Godavari plains are a result of such depositions. But when there is an inflow of flood water, the river beds become too high due to the deposits. The rivers then change their course again and cut a new path. As a result, one can see constant new courses cut by the rivers. Meanders or gentle turns like a snake are made by the rivers in the floodplains. The deposition along the sides of the meanders result in the ends of the loop coming closer. The meander loop cuts off the river gradually and results in the formation of a lake which is called Oxbow Lake. The next destination for the river in its journey is the sea. Once the rivers reach the sea, the fine material that has not been deposited gets dropped at the mouth of the sea which forms a delta. The word delta originates from the Greek alphabet delta. Students, all of us know that there is heavy snowfall in the cold areas like the Himalayas, Alps and other places. The snow eventually gets accumulated and becomes ice. As the ice begins to accumulate, it moves down slowly and reaches warmer regions. This slow moving of mass of ice is called a glacier. The movement of the glacier is very slow when compared with water. Once the ice reaches the warmer regions, it begins to melt, thus giving rise to a small river. The force of gravity helps in the movement of the glaciers. This is exactly how the Ganga originated from the Gangotri glacier in the Himalayas. The movement of the glaciers is so slow that it hardly moves a few centimeters in a day. The glaciers erode through a process called plucking. In the process of plucking, the pieces of rocks are lifted and transported. The pieces of rock and the ice move together on the rock surface that they flow. Students, just like how a sandpaper removes the small particles of wood, the glacier also removes and erodes the bedrock. The glaciers therefore create U-shaped valleys as a result of the plucking and abrasion. The glacier melts gradually and becomes water.
also at this point it does not have the force to carry the large particles forward and hence leaves them these left out large rocks become heavy and rugged boulders the smaller particles and pebbles remain on the bed of the glacier the debris which consists of the pebbles sand cobbles etc known as till is obtained by the glaciers from the slopes of the mountains valleys floors etc the till that cannot be carried further is deposited at the various part of the glacier the deposition of the till that cannot be carried forward at various parts of the glacier is called moraines students now that you have learned of the work of water work of glaciers let us learn about the work of waves the coastal landforms are a result of the erosions and depositions by the waves of the sea with the sea waves constantly hitting the rocks cracks develop over a period of time this eventually leads to the formation of hollow caves on the rocks the sea arches are formed as a result of the hollow caves getting bigger leading to the staying of the roofs of the caves the further erosions lead to the breaking of the roofs the walls that are left are called stacks students you must have observed cliffs in the sea the sea cliffs are the steep rocky coast that rises almost vertically above the sea once the sea cliffs undergo a weathering once the sea cliffs undergo a weathering process they transform as rugged capes and bays wondering what capes and bays are the headland that cuts onto into the sea is called a cape the wide mouth recess in the line of the coast is called a bay students have you wondered how beaches are formed The deposition of sediments along the shores by the sea waves results in the formation of the beaches etc. Students in this new section let us see what the wind or the atmosphere does. The wind is one of the significant elements especially in the deserts. As we all know around 1/5 of the earth being covered by deserts while some deserts are sandy some are rocky others are stony and so on But students what do you think is the role of winds in deserts The strong winds carry the sands and the fine soils along with them and hit the large rocks These like the glaciers act as abrasive sandpaper and erode the hard rocks the wind thus facilitates for different kinds of erosion and depositions in the deserts the large accumulation of fine sand in the deserts which is a result of the constant weathering and winds leads to the formation of sand dunes The sand dunes are unstable hills of sand that are moved by strong winds. One can see different shapes of sand dunes as they move and settle down. Students, the fine dust that blows beyond the deserts get deposited in the neighboring areas. The fine dust also known as loess is yellow in color and is very fertile. The loess which is fine dust is fine loam and is a good source of lime besides being coherent and highly porous The plains that are formed by the deposits of the loess are called loess plains Students here is a question for you How do you think the biosphere affects the lithosphere in the other words how do the living beings like us and the other living organisms like trees plants and grass influence rocks the plants trees and grass facilitate in the weathering of rocks the rocks are weathered 
by driving roots into fine cracks or holes in the rocks. They also help in the entry of water or moisture into the rocks that lead to withering. In addition, the plants and the grass help in the prevention of transportation of soil by wind or water. When it comes to human beings, they have played a significant role in bringing a change in the earth's crust, especially after industrial revolution. Before we wind up today's class, here's an exercise for you. Find out in which ways did the human beings bring about changes to the lithosphere. Well students, that was all for today's class. Hope you will keep all the important points in mind. See you in next class. Bye-bye.